All right, so in this video, we're gonna look at shear and moment functions. We can develop a function in order to find our shear and moment at any distance. Say for example, let's have a beam, right? This might be a fixed beam on both sides and we have a force acting here and our shear is gonna look something like this, might look something like this and our bending moment might look something like this. So why is it really important to understand this stuff? Say for example, we want a really specific point in the beam, maybe like here, somewhere like 2.75 meters along the beam, we can find our shear and we can find our bending moment values. We can develop a formula or a function where we can just plug in the distance and we'll get these values. So we're gonna look at some examples. We're gonna look at some examples and try and develop these functions. So for shear, so before we do shear, we're gonna denote as a V and moment, we're gonna denote as an M, right? So we have shear and we have moment and we're going to have be a beam with a pin and roller support and we're going to have 10 meter beam we're gonna have a point load of 30 kilonewtons acting three meters along the beam. And then we'll have another point load, 50 kilonewtons acting five meters from this point. So this will be a total of eight meters and this remaining will be two meters, right? And our reactions, so say for example, we already solved our reactions. This will be 49 kilonewtons going up. This will be our point B, so BY. And then point A, we'll say this is point A and this will be 31 kilonewtons, right? So we already have the reactions for the beam and all the forces involved. So it's really important that we, we have the forces and reactions already solved. Now we can analyze our beam. First step is to look at all the forces acting on this beam and cut this beam into sections where there's a change in force, where there's a change in force, right? So we have, you can say we have one section here. This is a second section and the third section, right? So we have three sections, we have three sections. And what we'll do is we can cut the beam along its three sections. Because of this specific beam, we have three sections. We're gonna end up with three shear and three moment uh, functions, right? So let's have a look at the first section, right? So we have the cut will be here. This will be our first beam. Our second section is gonna be cut here. And our third section will be cut up to here, right? So we have three beams and we're going to have three shear. This will be V1, this will be V2, this will be V3. And then we'll have a moment, M1, M2, and M3, and M3 here, right? So we have three. We have three sections, three moment and shear functions that we need to find, we need to solve, right? Let's have a look at our first section, right? It will be this section. So we can redraw our beam. We have our 31 kilonewtons going up. We have our V1. Right, so this shear, how I like to solve it is, I assume this shear is going down, right? I assume it's going down. You can you can have it going up, it's up to you. It depends on what you prefer, but I like to have it going down and I like to have my moment going in the anti-clockwise, right? M1, right? Just to clarify, just to clarify, if we extend this beam, we're going to get to a point where our 30 kilonewtons is gonna be acting. Right, so our 30 kilonewtons, if we extend, we go all the way to the 30, it will extend, but what we've done is that we've we've cut that section, so we don't have our 30 kilonewtons acting yet. Right, so we're looking at any distance uh, between zero and three meters, right? So this is up to three meters, that's what we're looking at. So we're gonna denote this as X1, so this distance is X1. So now we can write our functions, right? So we have our shear as a function of x1 right of a distance of x1 so we're looking at only our vertical forces we're only looking at our vertical forces right so we have 31 kilonewtons and this is acting upwards so i'm going to put positive 31 the only other force that i have is my shear which is going in a down which is going in a downwards direction right so it'll be a negative v1 and there's no other forces so that'll be equal to zero so all i do move this to this side and i'll get my shear function for this side v1 is equal to 31 kilonewtons right so now i've found pretty simple i found my shear function at, at any distance at any distance of x1 so my moment we need to have a point at where where we're finding this moment and our point is at the section that we cut right so we're looking at all the moments acting around this point let's say our moment as a function function of x1 so we're going to have we have a positive m1 and then we have so our positive m1 is acting like this and then we have our 31 kilonewtons acting in this direction 
Okay, so we have our 31 kilonewtons acting, and this is a, in the negative direction. So we can go negative 31, and it's acting at a distance. It's acting at a distance of x1, right? So 31 kilonewtons times x1 meters, right? And that will be equal to zero. So if we have, all we need to do is just move this to this side, and we have our m1 function. m1 is equal to 31 x1 kilonewton meters, right? And now we've found our function for m1 and v1. So now we've solved our first one. Now we need to do it two more times, right? We need to do it two more times and we can find all of our functions, right? So now we have our first moment and shift function. Now we can find the second section. So our second section is going to be at a distance of zero to five. Our second section we're looking at, um, X2 can be at any distance from zero to five meters. Let's redraw our beam. We have 31 kilonewtons acting here. We have, we have 30 kilonewtons acting down here at a distance of three meters. And this distance is X2. This distance is X2. And then we have our shear, our V2, and we have our M2. So we just redraw the beam and we've cut at this section here. Okay, so let's find our moment and shear function. So let's do our shear function first. V as a function of X2. Just like in the last example, we had a positive 31 kilonewtons. And then we have a negative 30. We have a negative 30 kilonewtons acting down. So we could just put negative 30 kilonewtons. And then we have a negative V2. That will be equal to zero. Okay, so all we need to do, move this V2 to this, this side of the equation. So our, our V2 is equal to one kilonewton. So our V2 will be one kilonewton. Here, M2, so M is a function of X2. So we have our M2 acting around in this direction. So we have a positive M2. We have a positive 30 kilonewtons acting in this direction, which will be plus 30 kilonewtons, but it's acting at a distance of X2, of X2 times X2, you can write meters. And then we have a negative moment acting in this direction, right? So we have negative 31 kilonewtons, and this distance is three plus X2. So it'll be three plus X2 meters. This will be equal to zero. And then we'll move all of this to this side of the equation. We find M2 is equal to 30 X2 kilonewton meters plus 93 kilonewton meters plus 31 X2 kilonewton meters. That'll be our moment function for this next section. Okay. So now we have our second shear and moment function. Now we can find our third shear function, right? What we can do is we can either analyze this section of the beam, which will carry point load, point load, and we have our reaction here. We can analyze that section of the beam or we can analyze the other section of the beam. So the section that's cut from this side, which is the opposite the opposite side of the beam. We're just gonna have our reaction here and we don't have any other forces involved. We can analyze either section. It won't make a difference. We're gonna just analyze this section. Okay, so we'll analyze the simple side. The simple side, it will, it will be a bit quicker to analyze that side. So we'll redraw the beam. So we're gonna analyze from the opposite side. So we have our beam is like this, cut on this side, we have a roller, and we have our we have our reaction, which was 49, right? 49 kilonewtons. And we don't have any other forces here. So the only thing that we need to keep in mind is if we analyze the other section, we need to flip our shear and moment uh, values, right? So we need to have our shear going in the positive on this side, and we need to have our moment going in the negative direction on this side. Let's write out our shear function, so V x3, and this distance, right? So we have our distance from this side is going to be x3. All we have is 49 as a positive, 49, and plus we have our V3. So we need to move our 49 to the other side. We're left with V3 is equal to negative 49 kilonewton. And then we have our moment as a function of X3, right? So we have going about this point. So we have a negative moment going in this direction, right? So we have a negative M3 and we have a positive moment going in this direction. Right, so we have a plus 49 kilonewtons times x3 meters. And this will be equal to zero. We move our moment to the other side to make it a positive, and we just have m3 is equal to 49 x3 kilonewton meters. And this will be our moment function and our shear function. And now we've found our three 
moment and shear functions. So now we have our three moment and shear functions for this beam, and we have all of our distances as well. But it's really important as well to understand that when we analyzed our beam, it was from this side. So this X value is going to be starting from our reaction point. So for example, we put one meter into this function, it's going to analyze one meter along this along this point, whereas the other ones are going to be where well, the other the other moment and shear functions are going to be analyzed from the opposite direction. Okay, so that's really important. So that's the moment and shear function.